this. So will we be able to claim the oil and if we do, will we be able to build a real base? Is there even enough space to attempt that? Well, those are the 99 problems we need to deal with next time. But hey, we may have 99 problems but a base ain't one. At least we can finally have some peace and quiet without all those biters running amok. So the next part of our game plan is all about claiming some stuff for ourselves. First up, we are preparing to claim the oil field. We can't fill our flamethrower turrets with water after all. And second, we somehow need to create a reasonably safe space where we can build an actual base without non-stop distractions. But these chests, they must not be destroyed or it's all over. So let's proceed with some caution and not leave it completely undefended while we head out to the oil fields. What? The oil fields? You don't even have a base! I know, normal people build a base first and only then proceed to expand out to claim oil. But not us. We are just a little... special. Anyway, now we're gonna need to take out these defenders here. So let's arrange our hotbar and attack the southern section first. That should be easy enough as it has only 4 nests and 1 worm. We're gonna try to conserve some resources by placing the gun turrets just outside of the nest range and use the very resource efficient shotgun to take down the nests instead. See, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Just two more nests to go. Okay, retreat, retreat. No biggie, we'll be right back. Now we just need to evade the worm spit and ooch, ooch. Okay, okay, retreat, retreat. Okay, let's just use this gun turret to finish off the worm then. We'll give it exactly not enough ammo. Let's reclaim these gun turrets while we heal up. Hey, what? He survived? Let's magically grab the gun turret from under their claws from 10 meters away to save it. Okay, okay, okay then, I give in. Let's use the turrets to kill the final nest before the biters eat me alive. Well, that was embarrassing. Okay, out with the resource conservation approach. That's clearly not working. We need to use all the power we've got to take out their main base. Because it's a forest base, it consists of a lot of dangerous worms, but relatively few nests. Let's create a turret fallback point if things go south and go in. While we walk in, we place some empty distraction turrets ahead of us for the worms. They will keep shooting at the first thing in the range, so that gives the next line of turrets some time to shoot before they are targeted and destroyed. We help out personally with some grenades. Okay, first strike complete, time to retreat. That went pretty well for the first strike, I must say. Before we go in for the kill, we create a new fallback point more close by trying to limit the chances that any of the other nearby nests are called to help their neighbors out. We use kind of a similar strategy but without grenade support this time. Not trying to be stingy with resources again, but we want to preserve as much forest as we can. It will help just a little bit in the short term, but it is even more important for the very late game I um, have uh, theorized to uh, one day happen. Alright, all nests down. There are still a significant number of worms left though. But let's throw caution in the wind and fight them fair and square. Mano e wormo. Okay, okay, off to a great start, at least for the part where you throw caution in the wind. Now that was more like it. Actually, let's take out this last one and call it a day. All of the other worms are far enough out that they may be those who remain. Now, the area around the oil sources is pretty forested, which is good in one way, 
because it will reduce the number of attacking enemies by absorbing some pollution and also we won't be here personally to help out with the defense but the forest is bad in another way though it's gonna be hell to build and connect all the pipes while simultaneously trying to preserve most of the trees I will spare you from it though but I'm gonna start handcrafting some flamethrower turrets while we build it Okay, I think all the pump jacks are connected, but trying to build and memorize where I put pipes was horrible. Just look at this hidden pipe corner behind just a few trees, and now extrapolate that to the dense forest below, and I sincerely hope you don't get what I mean. But how are they gonna work, you ask? Well, we brought a special micro power plant just for the oil outpost. Okay, now we can actually check if it's all connected by checking the total oil in the system at various points. It should be increasing linearly as we click on random pipes in the system and any jumps in fluid count means something is disconnected. But it looks like we're good. Of course, that means pollution will start spreading immediately as well, so we will temporarily defend this outpost with the old base's gun turrets and yellow ammo. After we set up the main base, we can come back to properly reinforce it with walls and flamethrowers. Some good old pipe walls later, and it's time to pipe the oil out to our main base... Uh, location, I guess. It's a bit of a stretch to call a handful of chests next to a crashed spaceship a base. Experts agree that there is more base in our outpost than in our actual base. To be honest, if this were a private playthrough, I wouldn't place a raider here now. We don't need the extra pollution, and we don't even have enough spare electricity for it. But alas, we are making a movie. Not placing the radar would be similar to filming with the landscape still on. I want to turn north around here, but an enemy expansion is blocking my way to walk around the cliff. Also, the first medium biter has appeared. So, let's go north here and adjust later, I guess. Maybe here? No, no, there are some Johnnies in the forest shooting at me. Ah, I'll spare you the rest of the trip through this jungle. Actually, while playing Mike Shirley is having lots of fun navigating through that forest, let's demonstrate yellow ammo versus medium biter, and why I was so anxious about it. Okay, so that's about 20 small biters mowed down in about 5 seconds. Now let's try one medium biter. Yeah, well that also took 5 seconds of continuous shooting. At this point in the game, those armored bastards have the effective health of over 20 small biters, plus they do serious damage, and they are the fastest dudes until very late into the game, outrunning even big biters. Now, that's quite a sudden power increase for the enemy, and the main reason why we were in such a hurry while gathering resources from our previous base. Alright, we made it back to the bay. Wait, what's this blockade? Let's lure them away so they don't alert the nest while I We put down a couple tanks to siphon the oil to our base. There's already 18k oil in the system and we're gaining about 100 oil per second. Awesome! But despite the dense forest, the oil field pollution is already spreading onto the biter nest. Hopefully it will survive. Okay, so after careful evaluation, the planning council decided there is really no space for a base, and we will have to kindly ask the citizens of Souter Bytefield to move out. But just as the demolition crew arrives, it appears they have signed a protest, and bureaucracy demands the demolition to be delayed. So we are forced to take another journey to review the protest, and once we have satisfactorily rebuilt over their complaints, take the journey back while night falls. All these small delays add up though, and during the fixing of this one small issue, the passage of time alone caused the evolution factor to increase by a whopping 0.3%. And now we have to take out this giant nest somehow. 
Judging by my combat performance and trying to claim the oil field, there is really no way I'm going to be able to do that with grenades and gun turrets. But we don't need to. Now we've got... Flamethrower turret. Wow, that was awesome. And it went pretty well, I must say. Well, although that may have looked fairly easy, there is not much more useful ground that we can claim right now. And in general, we won't really be able to claim that much more ground like this. The flamethrowers are great in long distance area of effect attack, but they need some form of support. Their minimum range means they are defenseless against the fast and strong medium biters breaking through. Also, we went from 20 to 28% evolution between claiming the oil and this ground. The medium biter density becomes ever larger, and if we keep going, they'll even evolve to big biters, who will be ready to ruin our day any moment. We won't try to claim more ground as for now. That will have to wait until we're strong enough to not give an F anymore. That moment, if we get there at all, will be far in the future, I guess. For now, we have claimed our four starter resources and a small patch of ground to build on. It will have to do.